term flatella was used. Now the term flatella again, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that we are we're trying to break. We have never used it, but it was said about us, and uh, uh, associating with the flotella, which, which actually took place at the same time by accident, because the flotella should have been done a long time ago, had Greece not stopped them. And uh, uh, so it just was an accident, coincidence that we were at the same time. So we. The flagella means associated with a negative connotation of breaking some laws that Israel is not approving of, whatever. We had no we had no intention of this kind. We didn't want to break Israeli laws. We actually wanted to go through Israeli borders, talking to Israeli security officers, answering the questions truthfully. Not saying I'm going to say to see my boyfriend in Rosh Hashanah or my girlfriend in Tel Aviv. No, actually I'm going to see Palestinians in Palestine. And this was the provocation. This is this is what is illegal now. Israeli government is actually imposing on the international community restriction of movement. Good afternoon, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, with my colleague Sylvia Hale and friend uh, from Australia uh, had participated in the Fotilla in partnership with the Canadians, Belgians and Danes on the ship Tatria. And when our mission concluded and we learned of the Welcome to Palestine campaign, we thought we would like to come and give it support. So we arranged to fly to Tel Aviv, and when we um, um, <coughs> arrived at Ben Gurion Airport at the uh, passport control, um, we, we were asked what oh, we want to do in Israel, and we said um, we would like to go to Palestine. I have to say that I've come through several times to Israel-Palestine um, in the usual subterranean way that this was a time of being open and to say what we wanted. And the woman behind never blessed, nearly fell off her chair. She said, Palestine, what is Palestine? <laughs> and um, she ran on the phone very, very agitated and people came and they looked at our passports. It was a sort of a mixture of Keystone Cops and Kafka-esque process that we were in. And finally, we were taken away to a detention area and we called out to the crowded hall there, um, a free Palestine, free Gaza, we want to go to Palestine. And so eventually we were denied entry into Israel and detained and were to be deported at 7 o'clock the next morning. However, um, through our Australian embassy, which gave us excellent support, we contacted excellent lawyers who advised us how we might uh, appeal this decision and we decided to do so. And um, we uh, did so successfully. We successfully appealed a deportation order, which I understand is the only time this has successfully been done. And the result of that, that we were ordered to apply within 24 hours um, with the uh, with the appropriate IDF authorities. We weren't given any information about who to apply to um, to go to the West Bank. And then, if we were denied, our application was denied to leave Israel within 24 hours. So accordingly, we submitted our application. We have had no acknowledgement of that, and we have had no answer to that. So we wait with interest. Um, we are not sure whether we'll get a reply, and probably not before we need to go. Um, we feel gratified that we have been able to um, contribute to the success of this first um, Welcome to Palestine campaign. And um, we hope that in the future, you know, this is part of a, a building process. So right now, I think we see a tsunami of initiatives, international initiatives, to defeat the so-called international community of power nations and the people of the world are in so many ways. We've got the flotilla, we've got Welcome to Palestine, we have the monitoring of the um, boats outside um, um, the idea, idea of, uh, uh, activities at, on the coast of Gaza. We have Viva Palestine. There are all these popular, um, and, the, and of course, the boycott, divestment, and sanctions campaign, which is really taking off. So with all these popular activities, I think it will make and nullify all these power, all these guns, all this purely military colonization of Palestine, and this popular movement is winning. Palestine is not only Gaza, and Palestine is not only West Bank, but also the Palestinians in Israel, also the refugees, also Gaza, also Jerusalem. But as you know, we all live in uh, a siege and uh, separated from each other. It seems, let's say that we as a Palestinian people think that the international community 
and they say the community and not the governments because we could see the rule of how the governments act in, a, in, in a, 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 the flotilla issue in Greece and uh, in different issues. So our expectation is to mobilize the international community because this is actually what left for the Palestinian people to have attention and to have more uh, action in among the international uh, community. Um, it's also, I want to make another point, that it's very clear, it seems that Israel government feel a threat from the peaceful activities that the Palestinian people take. Also, we could see the BDS law in the government, we could see the attacks of the peaceful demonstrators in Belain, and we could see how Israel act in hysteria when um, these uh, groups of Sorry. internationals yes. came here. So I really uh, wonder what uh, the world and what Israel specifically accept, is expect from the Palestinian people who live here. And maybe they really uh, uh, feel that the peaceful action, like the Tutela, like the Welcome to Palestine, is more dangerous for Israel than uh, any other action that the Palestinian people may take. Uh, the other point I want to, mo to make, my late last point, is um, that we're going to repeat this campaign. We're going to have uh, bigger delegations that are coming to Palestine in the 15th of May and in the 8th of July in the next week. And we're calling the internationals to come to Palestine. We have uh, the right to raise our voice.